Hey y'all, how you doing? Uh, my name is JT Bates. Um, I'm happy, proud to be a part of the St. Cloud State University 2020 Virtual Day of Percussion hosted by Dr. Terry Vermillion. Uh, sponsored by the Department of Music at St. Cloud State University. And funded by the David Swenson Foundation of Minneapolis, Minnesota. David Swenson Foundation is a private foundation that funds scholarships and percussion studies at SESU. Uh, Dr. Vermillion always has a lot of cool percussion stuff going on. And uh, um, yeah, just highly recommend checking out the program and keeping tabs on what, what he's up to because he's always doing cool stuff. Um, proud to be a part of it anytime I can. And um, he asked me to put some videos together for this thing. So one of the things he requested was just some open improv. Uh, this is some, something I've done a lot in my life. Played a lot of free jazz and improvised music noise music, electronic stuff. Um, I, I make a lot of kinds of music, make a career as a drummer, doing many things. But uh, this is definitely something I've spent a lot of time doing and uh, really enjoy um, trying to discover sounds on the old drum set there. So uh, move this camera a little bit so we can see the kit a little more. It's hard to talk and be in the video and then also get a good shot of the kit. So here, I'm gonna move this for a second, then we'll get started.
Hey there, everyone. I uh, want to thank Terry Vermillion for having me uh, be part of the St. Cloud State Day of Percussion. Uh, and uh, I always uh, love doing anything I can do with Terry and his programs, Creative Guide. He's always bringing a lot of new energy around and doing a lot of cool stuff. It's great. So um, uh, thanks, Terry, for having me. Um, he asked me to do a couple of few things. So uh, one of them being um, to... Uh, he mentioned uh, some, some stuff that I do in some, I guess kind of more in session work that I do a lot of songwriter, folk, folk rock, singer songwriter stuff. Um, and uh, in uh, trying to find ways to, you know, really get underneath songs, support songs. And, uh, but let there be a lot of space. So I'm not, I'm not driving, I'm not trying to drive the song, I'm trying to get up underneath it and, and um, finding these ways to sort of let the sounds that I'm making uh, have a legato-ness to them or have a, a, a length to them uh, that helps hopefully keep me um, from playing too many notes. Um, I come from a very intense jazz background and I play a lot of jazz music, a lot of creative music, hyperactive stuff. There'll be more, uh, you'll see some of that in some of the other videos. Um, so I'm really into this idea that like, uh, that as opposed to me dictating what's going on, like the music dictates what I should play. So, um, and I, and I also am a big believer in creating outlets for yourself to do the things you need to do. So if you are playing too many notes on a singer songwriter session, um, someone's probably going to say something to you and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just, it's just dialing in these different um, amounts of densities and different things and then making sure that you have uh, an outlet to play really intense things if that's stuff that you hear and that you want to be doing. So I, that's something I've always done is like try to make sure I have musical outlets for different things that I'm interested in um, rather than trying to say, for me personally, rather than trying to say, Oh, this is what I do. This is what you get. Not that there's anything wrong with that, because there's a lot of amazing, beautiful uh, musicians and drummers who are, do exactly their thing, and that's what they do, and that's a beautiful thing. And maybe that's what you're into, and that's great. I'm not saying that's not a great thing. I'm just saying for me, I really enjoy sort of shifting gears, dialing my own playing around based on what's happening around me. It's really fun for me um, and I feel like they sort of feed each other so um, I wanted to play this one groove that I think of a lot that I played on a Pieta Brown record um, and uh, um, still play this song with Pieta um, quite quite often and um, it's still uh, kind of hard to play this little groove but uh, but I love it and it has to me it really fits the sort of harmonic motion of what Piet is doing in the song. And uh, um, the song is called Other Way Around. You can check it out out there on the internet if you want. And uh, the original record actually is myself and another drummer. Um, uh, and, and so he's playing some shakers. And I am playing... Um, cross stick and a bass drum uh, thing that's with a hi-hat and so then but then when I started playing it live with her then I had to figure out a way to play it all together so um, it's just another version of a train beat there's a lot of ways to play train beats so um, there's 16th notes going in the right hand on the brushes on the brush it's like a one two three four on the two and four of that. So pretty common train situation. And uh, nothing else that I'm adding is you know, incredibly genius or anything. Just trying to find the right places to play accents and loud and, uh, and landmark notes. So what I fell into was like a
So yeah, so that groove uh, is a fun one, I think, and it's interesting because the train beat in the folk and singer-songwriter land, I mean, you, you, you're going to constantly be put up to, if you're doing that kind of work and doing playing that kind of music, you're going to be put up to trying to find these different ways to play those train beats and not, you know, some songs, it's just, it, they're, it just each song is its own little life, so that train beat's not gonna work on every song. You can't always play, uh, you can't always play, uh, you know, double time train beat, like, uh, you know, on every song. You can't always play the half time. They're all fun. So just coming up with different ways to play that little train beat uh, or, you know, experimenting with uh, leaving notes in or out. Um, you know, how does that change if you are playing a train beat with a cross stick and a brush? That feels nice. not even the patterns it's about like which which how many beats between another strike right so that's going to start to give you a longer feel without having to play you know a lot of extra notes um or to feel like you have to change up what you're doing and uh you know there's some of this stuff seems really easy but you know i uh, i feel like a lot of times people will say oh yeah i can i can do i can play a train beat and then yeah sure and then you count them off and they start fidgeting around and, and futzing around and I love to do all that stuff I love to play different music of course like I said earlier but but uh, if you really want to get into these things if you really want to you know get into the you know the people that everyone talks about Steve Jordan Jim Keltner uh, Charlie Drayton all these amazing drummers Matt Chamberlain they're playing the, the amount of repetitiveness that they're playing is is uh, is part of what makes it so magical. They aren't playing literally repeating you know themselves every four beats, but it's the, they're sitting in 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 a static thing on a certain level and then changing within that. So if you're playing a song. A train beat song and maybe the verses have a nice uh back and forth between those sort of you know you're playing there's a certain part of what you're doing that stays the same and, and things are changing around it but not changing in a in a more uh, active rhythmic sense they're actually just changing the pulse so like I'm gonna maybe play I'm gonna play a whole note every other bar on the kick drum in the verse and then on the chorus I'm gonna play half notes because then now I'm gonna push it along and then um, being comfortable going back and forth between these things is is uh, really helpful and is really will help your feel grow in this great widening way where you if you're comfortable playing that train beat just making it feel good just with your hands you know everyone so often add another note
anyways, I hope that makes sense. Uh, thanks. This is another topic that Terry asked me to talk about, or kind of to ask me to talk about. He mentioned tuning, um, uh, and um, I definitely have some feelings about tuning the drums and um, different thoughts on once the drums are tuned, how they can be manipulated um, t into sounding like they might be tuned differently. So I, I, I tend to like to tune the drums pretty open. Um, it's not necessarily modern wise. It seems like people are tuning things tighter and tighter. Um, and uh, I love those sounds. I love the sharp sounds. I love the not a lot of resonance. I love that vibe. Um, but if you are tuning your drums always that way, then um, maybe some of you has noticed that then that's really kind of about it. You can't, you can't quickly get a lot of other sounds out of a drum that's tuned really sharp and tight. Um, I'm not saying this is for everyone. This is just my opinion and it's just what I like, what I like, um, for myself and especially like in a recording session situation um, where maybe I'm going to try to, or on the gate too, um, I guess I play a lot of music with a lot of different people and um, I play a lot of sort of songwriter type stuff and things like that where I like to kind of try to get a different vibe going from song to song, even during the shows, especially during the recordings. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm you know, before you click thumbs down on the YouTube there, I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, it's just my opinion and it's also just uh, some stuff that has worked for me and most of it's stolen from watching other people do things and uh, certainly not uh, pretending like I've reinvented the wheel here or anything like that. Just, um, just some stuff to think about. And um, um, one thing I encourage all my students to do over time is to just change the sound of their drum set even to even to a place where it's not really maybe the normal zone you'd like to be in uh there's you know music is uh you know at least on the spiritual side of music is in a lot of re respects it's a it's a reaction to sound it's a reaction from your ears to your uh tech to, from your ears first to your technique to your you know what is it what is a certain sound maybe is going to make you play a certain way a certain different sounds going to make you play a different way which is why I'm interested in having a drum tuned in a way that can give me a lot of resonance maybe even too much resonance uh, and uh, and then be quickly muffled or muted into something different um, so, or, or prepared in some certain sort of way. So, um, the floor tom is a great place to start. The floor tom is pretty amazing. Um, I definitely, I'm going to change the can angle of this camera here a little bit so you can see a little more what's going on. And then, uh, um, also I should say that, uh, I am a huge fan of these. W right angle legs because they really open up a floor tom in a huge way. Um, that's a whole other discussion, physics, whatever. Don't I don't know the details, but I know that it's true. And if you're having trouble with your floor tom and it's choked out, pick it up off the ground and hit it again and see. And then if it's uh, if it rings real nice when you do that, then what's happening is your drum's being choked out by legs and and hardware. And there's a lot of different solutions out there, starting with the original rims mount, Gary Gauger's invention. He's the one who figured out the physics of all this stuff. Anyhow, um, so this floor tom is tuned pretty, pretty wide open right now. One of the 
Netflix, Flipped Over, which is a, is a very cool video from on the DW YouTube page where uh, John Good's talking about this concept and uh, how you can just flip these legs over and make the drum ring more or less. It's pretty cool. Uh, so now all three of the legs are, are on the actual feet. for most applications, almost any application, that is going to be too much. However, if we could think back to what I said a minute ago about how maybe a sound makes you want to play a certain thing, um, then, uh, you know, much like short, tightly tuned drums might make you want to play staccato and make you want to play a lot of uh, frenetic ideas. Maybe a, a floor tom that's ringing for quote unquote too long would make you listen to it. So now if we think about, you know, what's the opposite end of that? We could have a floor tom that Um, this is how I like to, uh, this is stuff that really inspires me. I, I like to try to find a way to make this floor tom that's maybe ringing too long sound cool and work in my favor. So if there's a way. These are not brand new ideas. Uh, a muted floor tom versus an open floor tom is, uh, you know, or versus an, just a muted drum versus an open drum is probably thousands, you get thousands or hundreds of years old as a concept. I'm not saying that. But um, instead of, you know, uh, thinking that, oh, this maybe there's something wrong or something like that, maybe do some exploring. Just uh, it's fun to explore and see what's going on with your drums and see what kind of sounds they're making. So another thing that I love about something that's ringing too long is uh, to just take a brush and put it, set it on there. So yeah, those are some fun, uh, fun things that can happen with a drum that you know, in 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 theory, might be ringing too long. Again, not something you're gonna you know want to use on your uh, you know whatever gig you might be playing. That's more of a straight ahead thing or something like that. But but I'm talking about experimenting, getting to know your drum set at home and your practice time. And sometimes when it's practice time, maybe we shouldn't be practicing, maybe we should be exploring, right? Like we have, we spend a lot of time with these instruments and they're, uh, a lot of times we're learning techniques that are really someone else's idea that they wrote down in a book. So I like to do that, but I also like to try to find out what my own ideas are and um, what sort of sounds and things inspire me. So. Um, 
so uh, as you can see here, I have this, this piece of chamois clipped onto the snare drum. Also not a new technique, not some sort of groundbreaking situation, but I do love uh, this sort of thing because it's very malleable and it's malleable in between songs or even in during a song or even while you're, you know, playing something with one hand, you can change the, you know, change the resonance of the floor tom, right? So I got this big piece here so we can do like a full mute, which is cool. physics of it, but I've noticed it a hundred times in my life. We're getting a different partial of the note here. We're getting a different pitch, right? Let me back this up now. The drum's actually pitched up a tiny bit. So that's also kind of cool. Another way that you can change a sound like this as opposed to a moon gel or something that can just uh, help help uh, just dampen that drum back a little bit whereas a moon gel is stuck on there and makes a mess they melt in the summertime they melt under lights uh, they definitely also sort of in my opinion uh, sort of kill a certain frequency as opposed to just backing off the resonance of the drum gig, right? So like a right? Still pretty resonant, but we can make this kit go go pretty uh pretty seventies pretty quick here with a couple clips and uh and uh pieces of uh, leather. It's pretty fun, I think. Um, of course, I can't find a clip right now. So I'll just use this one. So right, so now we've got, in, you know. This is why I like these clips and these cloths. So you can use any kind of cloth. I happen to like the way this sounds. I feel like it sounds good and it's it's soft. Um, this is traditionally cured and tanned uh, deer skin, I believe, is what I've been told. Um, so it has it doesn't have any hard edges. It's soft on both sides. And, uh, and I really like it, but you could use, you know, any, any cloth really. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I hope some of this stuff makes sense and I hope that maybe you'll be inspired to spend a little time with your drum set and messing around and trying some different sounds and things like that. Uh, thanks for checking it out.